Good morning, everybody, and welcome to TLC Live as every Wednesday. And this is going to be our last TLC Live from the 2020 because we're going to take two weeks break, even though that Orlando doesn't want it, but I want it. So because I work. Good morning, Orlando. Good morning. <laughs> ¿Cómo estás? Elvira. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys should see the conversation that we were having off the air before we started. It was like 10 minutes. I don't know if it was a conversation or we were fighting. I wasn't fighting. You were yelling. I was yelling at you and pointing at you. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I told the producer, I said, you should put us on the air. I think we're going to have uh, more ratings if people see us like that. Doubtful. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's natural, organic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, good thing it's the end of the year. Welcome to our weekly Facebook Live on Texas Latino Conservatives. We are all across the state of Texas, from the Red River Valley down to the Rio Grande Valley, and from the Coastal Bend to the Big Bend. Uh -huh. Wow, all look across at you. Texas. Yeah. Look at you. Okay. Well, you're not the only professional here. I mean, you know. Oh, no, I know you are very... My father, you are pro. My father was uh, 50 years in broadcasting. But you look like you're being in broadcasting all your life, pretty You much. think? Really? Oh, yeah. That's very Definitely. nice. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, Especially like, coming from somebody like you. No, you know what? We got, got a, a compliment. We got a good compliment uh, from our last guest. And she was saying, uh, I read the text to you, yeah. and I couldn't even pronounce the word because in Spanish it's camaraderia, and it's, it's called camaraderie. Camaraderie, no? Yeah. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it, it's very similar English to Spanish, but uh, I cannot say it in English. I just say it in Spanish, camaraderia. Okay. Meaning that the partners in crime, kind of. No, it doesn't mean partners. Well, I guess it could. But yeah. <clears throat> anyway, welcome. Uh, as I explain every week, we are a political action committee, but we also have a nonprofit organization also called Texas Latino Conservatives. It's incorporated in the state of Texas. It's an LLC. And we engage in a lot of education, talk about issues. remained conservative and it was important because as you know we do a a, um, a a census every 10 years we just completed the census the data will be out and the reason we do this census is for reapportionment of representative districts both in the texas house of representatives senatorial districts and for congressional districts texas because as you well know is experiencing quite an increase in population, particularly from people coming from California, Oracle, Hewlett Packard, Tesla. You know, I saw something on the internet that said Oklahoma's cheaper, all Californians <laughs> go to Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important that we kept the Texas legislature red, and we did. We have identified well over 250,000 Latinos that we call low propensity voters. And what low propensity means is that they're registered to vote. At some point, they have voted. And when they did vote, they voted conservative. But for whatever reason, they didn't come back. And we needed those voters to come back and to participate because in the districts we targeted, they potentially made up that small increment. Remember, we lost some House districts by a couple hundred votes. So when we identified anywhere between 500 to, let's say, 1,900 low propensity voters in those particular districts, and if they were to turn out, in those cases, they would make up the margin between victory and defeat. And so the data indicates that the folks we targeted, the Latinos we targeted, by a number of um, ways of contact, digital, mailing, uh, block walking, that is knocking on the doors, in-person encounters, texting, live phone calls. We did teletown hall meetings informing the public of what was going on in Texas last year, particularly with the COVID-19 and then with the uh, stimulus money that was going to come out. And then we did a series of town hall meetings on education. And so all of those were well participated. And so people then began to trust us as a source of good information. <clears throat> and so that's what we want to continue to do in 2021, because it's not sufficient to contact voters 
educate the community, encourage them, motivate them, find candidates, young Latinos. And by the way, we had tremendous successes. Mm -hmm. uh, we <coughs> helped elect a city councilman that we endorsed and gave money to in Pearland. Um, we had several candidates across. Uh, uh, we, there's, a new, Michael. there's a new Latino councilman in uh, Freeport. Uh, oh, yeah. Texas. <clears throat> and so, and happy to announce that of the 25 districts we targeted in the Texas House of Representatives, we won 15 of those. Yes. So we did very well. And so. Now we can do better. We can do better. Mm -hmm. We should do better. We need to do better because of the largest growing segment of the voter base in the state of Texas are Hispanics or Latinos, however you want to identify. And it's important to increase the participation and get those Latinos to vote conservative, which is their natural values. And so we just let them know that we believe the same things they believe. We're able to deliver the message through several platforms and several different medium, mm -hmm. uh, media, media. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we can do it bilingually. So that's our plan. Today we uh, are supposed to have a guest, which Andrea will introduce. She's on her way. Uh, She's on her way. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful. Um, lady uh 20 years old only yeah. and she is a mix between uh, um the mother is from mexico and the father is from palestine so she is that's why she's late i always tell you orlando that's why she's late because <laughs> she has a combination between middle east and latinos and yeah. and we're never on time i've been you know i've been working on that i've been getting better don't you think yeah you have i've been getting better yeah for sure, I've been getting better. A little bit. Trying to work on that. Um, before, I was a completely disaster. Uh, when I was saying uh, 12, it was for me 12.30 already in my head. That's why the program, when you go to our Facebook page or on our website, it says... 11, más o menos. TLC Live on Facebook, más o menos. Más o menos. Which means know? more or less, right? Because we can't be precise. <laughs> she, she has a hard time showing up on time. And be fair with me. One time you were very late, and that's... Uh, but I did call, and I announced that, and there were circumstances, you know. It's like, I always tell you I'm an Air Force guy, right? Mm -hmm. You can never accomplish a mission unless, you know, if they tell you 14.15, which it means 2 o'clock in uh -huh. the afternoon, 15 minutes past the hour, yeah. you get the longitude and latitude, you load the ordnance, and you dispatch the aircraft, you drop the bombs, mission accomplished. None of that would work if we ran the military Muscle men. I know, I know. But, you know, to give me credit. I mean, just drop a bomb here or there, you know, whatever you feel like. But it. to give me credit, you know, when we started this life, I was pretty much almost late. Yeah. Only one time you got late. Yeah. And then, since then, you know, I get better and now I'm always on time. Right. So while she's getting better, and hopefully 2021 will be a good year for us, we want to <laughs> wish you all. I don't a, promise the English will be better, but. Well, that's why I'm here to help you. <laughs> But we do wish you a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, and um, or any other, you know, celebratory uh, tag you use. We want to wish you the happiest of New Year because we're not going to be around till the New Year again. Uh, the good news is here in Houston that our medical centers have received the both the uh, oh the, well, no, the, the the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna is coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, last week we talked, and I encourage folks to consider getting the vaccine. I mean, vaccines are nothing new. You know, we one of the big pandemics that occurred, uh, not in your lifetime because you're too young, <laughs> well, no, I'm not and too not young. really in mine, but kind of at, uh, before me, was polio. And, uh, you know, we went nine years, I think, before we I developed have the mark the, here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so polio was essentially eradicated by virtue of, va of a vaccine. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on on the Internet about, you know, the two nurses that had an anaphylactic reaction uh, to the shot. Happens all the time. That's not uncommon. Uh, a couple people died of coronary disease after the shot. I don't think it was related. It would have happened in the general population anyway. So I was recommending that people consider, given the data, uh, taking the vaccine. And, and then somebody on Facebook was like, Oh, my God, I can't believe that guy's encouraging people to get the vaccine. I'm not encouraging you to get it. I'm encouraging you to look at the data and make a determination. But I'm going to wait for you to do it first. I know. You and I'm going to wait like a, yeah. a month and, I, and then I take it. Well, that's fine because, you know, the, it, both Moderna and <laughs> Pfizer have had uh, trials. And I 
you know, let's just assume each one tried it out on 35,000 people. That's 70,000 people. They're still alive. They're developing an, an, uh, an immunity to it. So, you know. And, and by the way, as I understand, I'm not a physician or anything. No, but me I do, neither. But I, I do was... watch a lot of scientific shows. This, this, this vaccine is sort of based on the MRSA virus uh, 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 antidote, I guess, is what I've heard. So, like, the reason, one of the reasons they were able to come up with it quickly, it's kind of like a, a flu virus, right? I mean, vaccine. Yeah, the, the flu changes every year, but once they identify it, they're able to use the same techniques that they've used, just adjust the, I don't know, the DNA of the, of the antidote. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. And I was reading the news, uh, I was watching the news and reading the news about the difference between Pfizer and Moderna. And Moderna. Do, you, you, do you hear about it? No. Okay, so... Other I'm, than their corporate competitors. Well, yeah, but it's a couple of difference, and one of the um, differences that got my attention is the age. So Pfizer is looking for like people from 16 years old and up, but Moderna it's like for 18 and up. So I don't know, and you know it's another uh, difference uh, between the days that uh, you can put it in the fridge and the temperature and. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand those things, but zero we're, we're, we were looking for to interview somebody that is an expert on that. We couldn't but they're all busy. They're all super busy, so probably next year we will have somebody because it's a lot of questions around that. Yeah. It's more questions than answers. One of the good things we're working on next year is uh, the ability to have live phone calls. Yes. So... We've asked Mr. Producer here to help us with that, so we may be able to take your phone calls next year and have you participate. All right, uh, back to politics. Or are you finished with your with you what? Know, pontification? <laughs> Whatever. Do you want to pontificate on something else? <laughs> no. <laughs> pontificate, no. You know what pontificate Can means? you explain to me that uh, term? That would be good. Well, you know they call the Pope the pontiff. Right? Yeah, yeah, that, like pontificar. Yeah. And Espanol is pontificar. So well, there you go. I just same put thing. a logic and it's like sounds the same. Very good. So, yo, yeah, no, I don't want to pontificar ningún punto. No quieres pontificar nada. No, más. no quiero pontificar nada. Yo no sabía cómo traducir, así que muchas gracias. A veces pontificar. <laughs> Ahí no, es que es, es increíble. It's my Spanish lesson for the day. I just learned how to say pontificate yeah. in Spanish. And I learned that it's similar to Spanish, that word in English. Right. Yeah. All right. Back to politics. If mm -hmm. she's finished pontificando. Um... As you know, we just finished the elections, right? And our, our new state representatives, our new legislature will be sworn in soon. But those that will be representing us in Austin, and I can't remember the total number of state reps, but um, they all have the ability to what's called pre-file bills. That means they um, draft up the potential legislation, and there are thousands and thousands of bills that get passed in Texas. Anything from, you know, seceding from the United States to institution, institution, instituting gambling in Texas to, you know, creating medical schools and renaming, you know, buildings. And so there, and then there's real legislation like tax legislation, education legislation, uh, and uh, criminal code uh, amendments. <clears throat> so one of the bills that's been pre-filed, we call I'm gonna it... I'm going to look for that email while you talk about it. Okay, that. it's called the Local Bill of the Month. Yeah. We're, we're going to call it the Local Bill of the Month. We're going to feature a crazy yeah. bill. So we call it Local Bill of the talk. Month, and we've already had a Local Bill of the Month proposed. It's from Representative Mesa, and I think she's up around the Dallas area, but this is absolutely nuts. As you know, the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights guarantees us citizens the ability to arm ourselves, to own and bear arms, especially in our own castle. They call it a castle doctrine. The castle doctrine is built into the penal code. That's the criminal code in the state of Texas. In the event that a homeowner or a resident of a dwelling uh, discharges a firearm because he or she believed that their lives were in danger because someone is breaking into their house. 
there is a defense in the penal code in the state of Texas, it's the Castle Doctrine, that said you had every right to discharge your weapon if you were in fear of your life. That's been standard operating procedure in Western civilization. Uh, it was, you know, part of uh, the uh, British code, uh, and that's where the word came up. It, it, it said that a man's home is his castle, and he has every right to protect his family and to protect his property. And so if you discharge your firearm in the state the of tweet. Texas— Is this one? Uh, well, I can't see it, but you want to read it? Oh, well, I need to put my glasses, oh, too. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's both. Terry Mesa, uh, state representative, has filed— pre-filed House Bill 196, 196. She says, in my position on the Texas Castle Doctrine has been misrepresented in the news of late. She says it does not, it does not repeal the Castle Doctrine. It does not restrict homeowners from using firearms in self-defense as applicable in current state statute. But here's what she says, that the code should be amended that you discharge your firearm and originally, she was arguing that, you know, we shouldn't have access to firearms in her house, that it is a resource of last resort, that she even argued that because most homeowners have property insurance, that you ought to retreat to the safest place in your dwelling. Imagine that. Hide in a closet while the perpetrator, and you're just assuming they're coming to take your property. You don't know yeah, if they're exactly. going to kill you or rape exactly. you or whatever, right? But it's like uh, ask permission. Like, uh, yeah. uh, you guys can go everywhere. Yeah. Just let me hide yeah. here in this take closet. Take what you need. Uh, yeah. We'll file an insurance claim. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry. so she wants to eliminate that portion of the defense in the penal code, which, as we know, is the Castle Doctrine. It's absolutely absurd, folks, that you should have to run and hide under your bed or in a closet, not take the ability to use lethal force if you feel your life is in danger. That is granted to you in the penal code. And by the way, the penal code is not something politicians just dream up. Everything in the legislature, the penal code in the state of Texas, has been drafted by the people of Texas. Let me repeat that. Our current laws are drafted by the people of Texas. We tell our representatives what we want. And Texas has clearly spoken. Texas supports the Castle Doctrine in the penal code. And this woman is absolutely out of control that thinks that, we, you know, lethal force should be used as a last resort. In fact, she would prefer that you not have any firearms. And she says, you know, <clears throat> it would spare a lot of lives of thieves that come at night to do you oh harm. Oh, my God. I mean, it's bizarre. And so that's why we urge you to vote conservative. Yeah. That's why we tell Latinos that, which, by the way, Latinos are big, big Second Amendment supporters, especially down in South Texas. And you know what, Orlando? That's going to, um, you know, many people don't even know what is the discussions in the legislature. Right. They don't even know what is the bill. So people don't know because nobody talk about it. Right. We Unle are. Yeah, we are. Unless that you are really into politics and you're really into reading that, but most of the people are not. Right. And that's why... Uh, we come out with a local bill because they're really crazy bills. It's really crazy yeah. bills over there. And so we need to explain to you what is about it for you to be informed. And that's why it's part of uh, our mission, you know, to educate and inform you guys. Yeah, and so we'll be doing that next year quite a bit. In fact, we plan days to take a group of uh, our supporters up to the legislature. We're going to argue for bills that are important to our Latino community, education, job creation, uh, health care. So those are important issues for the Latino community. We're going to fight for those. So we'll keep you informed. So I understand that our guest has arrived. Yes, talking about Latinas. Right. So and why don't you go ahead and introduce yes. her while Mr. Producer puts up a lovely picture of her on, uh, on the screen so everybody can see who we are. So Invited. today we're going to have uh, Bahira Shamin. Bahira Shamin. She just arrived. Come here, Mama. Sit here. Bahira uh, Shami. Hi, everyone. Uh, she was uh, named the youngest CEO, and also she was named Woman of the Year 2020. She only have 20 years, like 2020, 20 years. Bahira, how are you? Thank you. I missed you. So nice seeing all you. 20 years today. is a lot of experience, though, isn't it? Uh, it is when you grow up in the industry, right. which is definitely well, my Yeah, case. when you say industry now, mm -hmm. it's 
talk a little bit about what is the industry because people don't I know. Have, I have a little bit of the industry. Okay. I'm going to show. This is, this, is, this is my industry. This is a female-oriented <laughs> program today, so I'm going to be pretty limited in my participation, but this I'm delighted to have it. This is the industry I love, hair. Yes, so uh, the industry, the beauty industry, I work a little bit with makeup, but my forte is definitely hair. Um, and I grew up in the hair care industry ever since I was seven. My dad has um, many stories of me just like working with him and helping him with like, samples way before the company was even, it was a startup company. And to see it where it grew so much and like to have me so involved in it has been like such a blessing to me and my family and so fun. And something I definitely hope to pass on to my family. I met Bahia uh, when she was eight years old. So she, I was so impressed with her. Um, she's Thank such you. a pretty cute since she was little. But I remember when uh, your grandfather brought his company to Houston, um, Mr. Farouk Shami. Yes. He brought his company to Houston and he created thousands of jobs. And I remember it was a line and I was covering the story at Univision also because it was, it was a line of people, you know, applying for the job. And I remember going with your dad because I know her dad before she was born. We've been friends for many, many years. And he invited me to the grand opening. So I was walking with him and her, and she was just like eight years old. And she's just, you know, the attitude, you know, so confident. And she went on the stage, she opened this, the, the event, and she gave a speech. And I was like, and I was asking uh, Basim, uh, her dad, like, uh, are you sure she's only eight years old? He was like, I know, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that moment, because this is, you know, uh, many kids at eight years old are not even close to going, not even on, on, on a camera. Well, now with social media, yeah, mm -hmm. but to the stage with thousands of people in the grand opening. Yeah. So did you prepare that speech? Oh, how did that happen that day? So it's actually a really funny backstory. Um, well, my dad always pushed me ever since I was even younger than that to be strong and um, always like tested me like order your own food, you know, at a very young age. So I've always been very outspoken and for that I'm very blessed. And um, so that morning he said do you want to do a speech at the grand opening just that morning yes that morning and then i was like hesitant just because there's going to be over five thousand people at the event and i knew that so i agreed obviously because he always told me to push myself challenge myself and so i did and but we didn't prepare the speech until in the car on the way to the event in 10 minutes we had my whole speech ready and i had to memorize it like without practicing or anything um, the video is actually on YouTube. So, oh, yeah. we need to look for that video. Oh, we I should have put it up. I know. Well, we can check it out. I mean, if our producer can look it out, and maybe we can, we yeah. can put it. Might be putting too much of a burden on Mr. Producer. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, un, quiero comentar. La invitamos a Bajira porque es una de las ejecutivas más jóvenes en la ciudad de Houston, ¿no? Correcto. Y estaba explicando eh, en, en inglés que como sus padres la apoyaron cuando ella tenía ocho años de edad. Pero lo más importante es que también es hispana. Es, es mi, Parti, es, tiene, mitad hispana, tiene una ¿no? Mezcla. Yo medio gringo, medio cubano, ¿no? Exacto. Ella igual. Así y que ella es... Eh, madre mamá, es mexicana. La mamá mexicana sí. y el papá es palestino. Así es. Y... Um, y Pero, hablas los dos idiomas muy bien. Hablas sí. bastante bien el español para explicarle a la gente, Ajá. los que nos están viendo, qué son los productos, qué es la compañía, qué hacen. Pues la compañía se llama Blowpro y es una línea de productos para um, like hacer tu blowout que haces en el salón, que te dura por cinco días o más con mis productos, que son el shampoo, uh, cuando uh, compramos la compañía nomás era productos de líquido, como shampoo y hairspray, todo eso, pero con la experiencia de la uh, compañía de mi familia de antes, que ya saben que es Chi en uh -huh. yo y mi papá, um, que we created los tools, que son... Las herramientas. Sí, las herramientas. Que es la, <laughs> um, la, plancha, la plancha, el secador. Sí, la secadora, um, una herramienta para ondas, o sea, tenemos todo y tenemos uh, muchas diferentes colecciones. 
que mi favorita y la más nueva se llama el Kiss Collection. Oh, it's beautiful. So, I don't know if I, you guys And Bahira, tell us, oh, no, 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 tell no. us how many countries do you guys distribute to? So right now we distribute to 61 countries in total. Um, and I'm very proud of that. It's grown so be. much. Thank you. Um, it's grown so much since, you know, we started and I'm just so, I've been very blessed. And what's your so title in the company? So right now I am manager and director of marketing and working my way up to CEO. So as these markets expand, obviously the company's giving you great credit. I hear you're quite a influencer. You have quite a following yes, on correct. social media platforms. You were telling us that. And so Because we're we just did very, a tour yesterday. Yeah, we were, we're we just very proud yesterday. of you. I mean, it's, uh, you know, this has really nothing to do with politics, but it has everything to do with the future. You have a young lady that is bilingual. She is the daughter of uh, mom is Mexican. And through tenacity, and through hard immigrants. work. Exactly, yeah. two immigrants. I mean, you, you know, you, we're all immigrants, right? So, but this is just an amazing how... If you apply yourself, if you get an education, if you're persistent, um, you you will succeed. And we wanted to bring Bahida in because she is a success story. 20 years old, running a corporation, has 61 different markets throughout the world. That is an entrepreneurial dream, in my opinion. And we wanted to bring her as an example to young people that are watching that you too can achieve your dreams. You just need an environment where you receive a good education, And then you're free to... Y las ganas. Right? Manufacture, promote your products without government interference, yes. over taxation, over regulation, yes. right? I, I mean, you have to admire agree. You like the free And market. And hard work. I love the free marketing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the free market. The free market. No, the free market, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, our amazing producers were able to find the video when she was eight years Now old. Now they're going to want to raise. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Uh, All right, if you can put up the, the video, video from when yes, she was eight. Let's play the video. Today, to celebrate with us the grand opening of Chi USA. A special thanks to my grandfather, Farouk Shami, for bringing back many jobs back to the USA. Thank you, grandfather. I'm proud to be Palestinian, Mexican, and American. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Sí, mira, me, me, me dieron así como que goosebumps. Oh so that God. was Bahira, eight years old. She's a proud, uh, you know, uh, daughter of Palestinian and Mexican and... Uh, living the american dream and it's just you know fascinating this is a precious i remember video. that moment just so accurately just from the moment i got on stage to the bow to getting off and it was so it's such a memorable moment for me so, so but there's a tie to politics in all this you see what right? she says from yeah. a, a daughter from a palestinian a yeah. mexican yeah. and god bless america absolutely yeah uh but there is a political connection Um, her grandfather yes. ran for governor of Texas in yeah, the primary. For the he didn't make it, but he, you know, obviously he loves the state of Texas yeah. enough to make a contribution. Because I think anybody that runs for politics, but he uh, yeah. is 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 a uh, is is a patriot, wants to make a contribution. Correct. And so your grandfather did that. But I'm going to make a prediction. I think you're going to go into public life too. You think so? I mean, you're I... You're a great speaker. Thank you very much. <laughs> you just um, have to be conservative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she has everything to be conservative and your dad is very conservative in many ways. Yes. And uh, the way that you're being raised with your mom and your dad, you're being very conservative in many ways. Now, um, you're 20 years old, but you're not only the youngest CEO and the woman of the year uh, 2020, but also you just got married. And but everything is being a traditional, you know, family and you're and you keep your traditions, right? Yes, that is correct. I just got married about three months ago now. Um, it was a traditional Arab wedding and you know, despite COVID and everything we still had like an intimate gathering with just family. Um, but we do plan to have like a bigger wedding. Um at um, we, had we are yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They invite me and uh, plus one, so I'm gonna take you with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
and the producer, the producer wants to be invited too. So, uh, Bahira, what do you tell young people that <clears throat> have a dream like you did at an early age? You know, um, how do they prepare? How do you prepare to run a company that exports to 61 countries around the world? What What do you tell young people? What's the best thing they can do now? Let's say you're talking to a 10, you know, year old or 12 or year old years high old. schooler. What is your recommendation? So I know that that maybe seems like a dream, you know, exporting to 61 countries, but you can make, it's all up to you to make that dream a reality. So just with the good, the best education, like try to do your best in school is so important um, just for you to gain that knowledge that you need um, to do all those things and obviously have, you know, a great support system around you and just surround yourself with people who have that same goal you no doubt will get there because if that's your dream and you surround yourself with people that have the same dream you're all working towards one goal no matter what industry it could be it's all the same process so that's i mean just surround yourself with people that you know have good intentions and have the same goal as you and don't stray away from that goal but very important about here because many people would say like 20 years old and you know they're probably you know all about like going out and having fun mm -hmm. or when you were younger maybe you know play videos or whatever what you were doing when you were a teenager or since you were young like eight years old that i was seeing this amazing speech you were not uh shy at all you were mm -hmm. like just up front so what um what you what you did different than other kids in your class that it make you to be in this position right now? So while my classmates were off, you know, being regular teenagers and everything, as you can see from, you know, my video from eight years old, that's what I've been doing consistently since then. I, you know, just giving speeches and being motivational to the ladies around me, especially the Latinas um, that want to be entrepreneurs and everything. I've just been a motivational speaker for a number of groups of people um, that just come to me and ask me, hey, like, can you please, like, help these girls out um, and also I've been a judge for pageants oh, yeah. ever since then um, I, I've judged about seven pageants locally and not locally so th that's just what I've been doing um, I like to surround myself with older people just because I'm with older people at work and everything <laughs> that makes me feel good <laughs> <laughs> older just, people like you Orlando <laughs> just like people doing the same thing as I am gotcha. you know just not you know teenagers it's never really been my scene um, just because I just grew up differently and I was just raised with a different mindset so I just never wanted to experience well, that. one of the questions that probably people that is watching us can have you know moms or um, or younger people is like okay well uh, it, it helps that your dad has already a company mm -hmm. that your uh, grandfather has already a company uh, many people can say that but it's up to her if she wants well, to follow I, that I was gonna or just she was like, a, oh, well, I have everything. I don't have to work for anything. I was going to comment about yeah. that. There are a lot of yeah. parents that have built successful companies and turned them over to their Correct. kids. And, and the kids just run them into the ground, exactly. file bankruptcy. You know, they take the money. They go out and party Correct. and vacation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like Bahida's you know, no, she's gonna not. take the company in that direction. She's not, but that's why, because, you know, many people can think about that, but she did co totally the opposite. She's like, okay, I helped my dad to grow, and now she is in charge of the marketing, and she's growing that. So what we can tell uh, uh, another uh, kids or young people that they probably don't have a father that have a company or a grandfather that has a company, mm -hmm. and how they can also accomplish things that you've been accomplished, and also people that they have the possibility that they have a father with a company or a mother with a company, but they haven't done not even 1% of what you have done. So it definitely has been a big help um, just to be born into the industry. And I feel like that's kind of where my leadership mindset came from, a lot of it. Um, and I'm, of course, very blessed for that. But for the people that don't have that, I would say just look up to those people and kind of follow their steps. Google nowadays has the answers to everything, like step by step on how to do things. It's really just up to you to do that research and just focus yourself so much on it and you will get there. It is a lot of hard work and dedication, but it's all up to you at the end of the day. So, and there's so many success stories. Once you don't even, you won't even believe. I personally love to watch those documentaries just because even though growing up with people so close to me that have the success stories, it's just more motivational for me even, and just makes me strive 
even harder every single day for that same thing. And you say something that is the key here. It's up to you. It's yes. how far you want to get, how far you want to go, what is your goals in life. And I, something that I hear a lot and, and people your age or, or younger that, that, oh, I still have time. I still have time. And that's the main issue that uh, this generation has. It's like they think that they still have time. That is plenty of time because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young. I still have time. Well, no, it's not time. Um, so what we can tell uh, uh, this generation, what, what have you been seeing, you know, other people that is your age and mm -hmm. completely different than you are? So as humans, we obviously naturally think that all we have is time and everything like that. I, I could maybe see it, but the reality of it is, is life is way too short. Tomorrow is never promised. And if you want something so bad, you want it so bad that you need it now. So it just, if you say, oh, I have time, you must not want it so terribly bad. And, you know, you might be comfortable and that's fine. But if you are an entrepreneur, you know what it's like to just be like, I want this. And I want better for my family and I want better for me and I want, you know, even a certain lifestyle can motivate you. But um, at the end of the day, obviously, it's always, and no matter what circumstance you're in, you can pull yourself out of it. It's just up to the person and how bad you want it. Beta, do you, uh, on a daily basis as a corporate woman, you hold yourself accountable? Yes. I mean, what do you do? I mean, do you come in every day with a checklist of things and, with, you know... Uh, how do you make sure you're holding yourself accountable as a leader in your company? And by the way, how many employees do you guys have? I understand, like, you know, you have several warehouses throughout Houston and the country, but just one of them I hear is this massive. I mean, so how many how many people do you employ in this, like, where you work? So in-house we have about 40 employees, and then um, salespeople and educators we have about 100 educators. So, um, but managing all these people, you're right, I do have to hold myself accountable. So I come in every day knowing what I have to do and just get every single thing that I have planned for that day done. Especially now with my great team that we've built, I'm so blessed to have finally a team I'm comfortable with and a team with the same goals. Um, and that's also a tip for people to, who do have businesses. You have to make sure your workspace and your work staff are on the same page as you are and want the same for the company which, I, like I said, I'm very blessed to say I have now. It's been a journey. Being a business owner, you know, you have a few bad apples, but you know, now we're all very comfortable with each other and all have the same goal. So um, yeah, so every single day I just go in with my team and we find out exactly what needs to be done and everything and get it done. I mean, now, especially for the past couple months, it's been like that and we've seen great progress in numbers and just the energy of the space and just the overall company and I'm so happy with it. Have, um, has just, you know, talk about current events, has COVID uh, diminished uh, you, the volume of uh, products being shipped to the 61 countries or because people have more time, they're shopping online more? Well, we got very lucky. Um, so I know, unfortunately, unfortunately, many uh, companies, you know, went bankrupt throughout this time. Um, but we are very lucky to say that we only shut down for four days throughout the whole pandemic. So we were at work every day because we started making hand sanitizer, which made oh, yeah. us an essential company. And um, I and my father and I made that decision to keep the business running as usual. Um, COVID did slow a couple of things down for our vendors where we get you know our products from, but it did not slow us down. Um, we took it as a time to really focus on what the company needed, and restructure it a bit, and we're at our best right now. So we so, utilize that time. So uh, also for the guys watching, um, you know, don't don't worry. I understand they make products for men too, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for pets. <laughs> yeah, and for animals. Um, for, and yeah, for animals. Yeah. Horses, right? Yes. Yeah. So we have six brands, yes, yeah. and it all hits a different demographic. Um, my father and I really wanted to make uh, – like debt in the industry with every single hitting every single demographic so everything from you know blow pro which is super girly like for us women uh -huh. and um fuel for men and even you know pet salt which is for pets and dogs and cats and equisalt which we still have for horses you're correct so i think there's some products here you want to talk a little bit about them um yes i mean of course. andrea you want to just show some of the products. This is this for is, the pets. This is just a handful. This is for the pets. Yeah. This is just um, a small, you know, 
some SKUs from this all the thousands that we have. But yes, I'd love to talk another about Another iron. And so what are those? I don't so, know anything about that. This is... Because you can tell I have a lot of hair. So, <laughs> yeah. so this is the one that's for dogs and cats. And this was actually my father's first brand that was um, created in 1994. So well, I'm so happy to see that this is, you know, obviously still running and in business. And this is one of our most international um, companies. So it's a lot distributed, like more outside the U.S. than inside the U.S., but um, I'm very proud of this company. This was a collection that I renovated. The old packaging um, is still there, but I took the liberty of, you know, making it more modern. Or more um, fun. Because, you know, 1994 and, oh, yeah. you know, the packaging then was yeah. so much different. So this is one of my first projects that I did when I started working at the company full time two years ago. So this was my first project, actually. What is this? And then this is the first tool that we created for Blow Pro since, like I said, it was just a liquid line. So Blow Pro is a brand. Blow Pro is a brand. Okay. Yes. Um, in itself. And we acquired it in 2014 from the VP of L'Oreal. So, um, and Blow Pro was actually the first blow dry bar in the whole U.S. So, you know, dry bar nowadays copied blow pro mm. so but this was the first tool that we created uh, using our expertise you know from the other family company and since it was only liquid line so we made all our tools from titanium which is the latest and greatest technology versus ceramic the ladies know a little bit more um but i'm very proud of this and we also did the matching dryer to go with it which also has... This is the one Andrea dropped just a little bit ago. You might, <laughs> you, might, you might want to check and see if it works. Um, but yeah, this is the matching pink iron. So pink is my favorite color. And I just thought it was appropriate for the brand. Oh, yeah. So um, we made the same matching dryer. And it also has a titanium grill. Um, it is 187, 1087.5. Megawatts, so this is like an AC motor. Right. Um, and everything about this iron is like the latest and greatest. It has an LED white light to even purify your hair. I mean, it's just so amazing. And then, what do we have here? And then, this is one of my latest projects. Um, I'm very proud of this because this is a cordless styling iron. So, the other iron. As you know, it's just, you know, plug in the wall and then you just straighten your hair. But this one is for on the go. You're a busy gal, someone like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you just want to throw in your iron, um, like in your bag or something, do a little touch up. It's chargeable. So it has 40 minutes of styling time when it's fully charged. So great for touch ups, like I said, on the go. And this is actually one of our latest launches. Um, this technology is so new. So right now we're the only ones on the market with it thus far and I hope it stays like that right oh, and I have it <laughs> yeah awesome. and you have it too for your wife yes and y'all both have it it's a Christmas <laughs> present you weren't supposed to say anything oh, oh sorry no. Vanessa <laughs> I'll give you something else <laughs> <laughs> Bahira uh, are you allowed to give away something to the our audience I am I'm so open for that yes. okay so uh, what do you come you know you're the expert in marketing well, first of all, let her give her website because people, yeah, exactly. you know. Exactly. If people visit right. the website and so they can go to the website and they can call and if they mention. Or just type in, you know, saw you on TLC. Yeah, exactly. Saw yeah. you on TLC, saw you with Orlando and Andrea and you can give away something. Okay. If they, if they, they write it on, on this life. What do you suggest? However she wants to run the contest, okay. I don't care. So what but do you, how do you people what do you contact suggest? you? If somebody wants to order products yeah. from you, do they have to find a distributor or do you guys sell directly? So it's both. Mm -hmm. um, we are e-commerce. I mean, you can always order online. That's where our retail prices are and everything. So that's going to be www.blowpro.com. Just blowpro.com. And then if you know, you're a salon or something looking for the products because... Blowpro is a professional company, so it only has salon-grade quality products, which you can always go get that online if you want. But since it is um, just like salon quality, obviously salons, you know, come, and for that, they have to go through a distributor, uh, which we have many of those for Blowpro and Scruples, um, as you know. But that's how it works. We do do a lot of retail, though, especially for our latest collections. Um, you know, the Kiss Collections, mm -hmm. um, Dryer and Iron. That's a lot more of a retail product. Just 
just because of the aesthetic and it's a good Christmas gift if anyone's looking for one. Um, I definitely recommend it and you won't be disappointed. Uh, it's beautiful. I know. I love it. I have, I, I've been getting all the products since a long time ago because I know him for like 21 years. He heard that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Wish I would have known him when I had hair. <laughs> uh, I know, right? Come on, you still have well, hair. Listen, <laughs> listen, it's been a real honor. We wanted to bring uh, Bahida in because we're just proud of, uh, you know, we, we of this Latina that's, um, you know, half Latina. But as you can tell, her Spanish is impeccable. Her English is impeccable. She is the granddaughter, daughter of immigrants. And it's just the American success story. And we just want to highlight that, <clears throat> that that's what we fight for at Texas Latino Conservatives. We want an environment where immigrants can come into this country and live out their dreams, just like Andrea has, just like I have, just like Bahida has, just like her dad and her grandfather before. <clears throat> and not only do they pay millions of dollars in taxes to local economies through property taxes, sales taxes, they employ people in Texas and around the country. They provide a product made here in Texas and they're living their dream. And not only that, but as I mentioned earlier, her, her grandfather, as an immigrant, was able to live the American dream and actually run for governor of the state of Texas. Only in America does that happen. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of Texas Latino conservatives is to keep that environment that fosters family, strong family ties, education, and a bright future for your children. And to get there, we need a good system of education. We need access to health care. Yes. We want to ensure people that have opportunity for economic advance and have a job, right? Yes. And so, <clears throat> you know, that that's what TLC does. That's what Texas Latino conservatives fight for. Uh, and we're fighting for Texas. We're fighting for our conservative values. And, you know, we don't want to bring uh, Bahida in and make her too political, but I wanted to share with you that we're just so proud of her that we thought we'd share a success story in our community. Uh, and particularly at 20 years of age, my God, she's done more in <laughs> in 20 years than a lot of my 45-year-old friends. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. And I loved being here. You know, thank you so much for having me and letting me talk about my story and especially my family story and just having it all tie in together. I was just having a great time. And by the way, I've also heard that you do a lot of what I call kind of community development. Um, but you actually on weekends invite dozens and dozens of young ladies into your business and you have mm -hmm. what, what do you do there I mean you, sh you show them how to model or how to sell products I mean how do you encourage what is it that you do to be a mentor to these young ladies so um, they're all part of an organization called Modelo Latina and many other organizations. Is what? Modelo? Modelo Latino. Modelo Latino. Pageant. Yeah. Just go check them out. Okay. Um, and so they uh, all come to my facility on the weekends, specifically like every Saturday. And they come in and they do like their organizational routine that they do every Saturday. But they always want me to come in to motivate them and keep pushing. Um, these ladies all want to be like models. And not only that, they have these dreams. I mean, these mm -hmm. like goals in life and ambition and it's something that you know i love to see in young mm. women like myself um and others so i motivate them to you know keep going and like seeing them see me and be motivated just warms my heart so much so of course i'm going to be there for them every single saturday and um i just love pushing them and they love to hear me motivate them and because that's what drives them as well and just for their families and i just Sometimes you just need that reminder, like, who are you doing this for? Yeah. Not only you, for your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother. Like, I tell them that because I know what it means to have a family and want to do better for them. Um, and believe even in, in their themselves. situation. Yes. And, and just believe in themselves. Believe in themselves and just never stop, like, yeah. never give up. And it's just a reminder to them every single Saturday. And I love having them there. Well, we applaud you because that's a tremendous way to give back to your community, to help young ladies that want to be like you. You're quite an inspiration. Bahida Shami, okay. thank you so much for coming in. Uh, we know you're busy. You made a long drive to be here in the studio with you. We could have had you on Zoom, but I just thought it would be a lot better to have oh, you. Oh, I love I would love I'm so happy I'm here right yeah. now. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. So thank you so much for opening that up. You me. bet. And we want to wish you a 
Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Stay Thank safe you. and healthy and wish you the best in your marriage. Um, Thank you. And uh, much success, by the way. I hope next time we see you, your markets are grown to about over 100. Uh, oh, countries. Is that? So, I'm, uh, I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, una exitosa Latina de 20 años de edad. Maneja una compañía tremenda que tiene distribución en 61 países diferentes mundial. Están ubicados mayor, la mayoría de la compañía aquí en Houston, uh -huh. así que están creando trabajo, están pagando impuestos, están contribuyendo. Ella personalmente está ayudando, siendo eh, un ejemplo a, la, a las damas jóvenes en nuestra comunidad. Y como ya saben, habla español perfectamente porque su mamá es de México. Así que le agradecemos mucho a ella por estar con nosotros, ya vieron los productos, ya saben su página de web, si quieren ordenar quieren pedir, quieren hacer una pregunta, ella está disponible para ayudarlos a todos, así que felicidades Merry Christmas, Happy New Year stay safe, and I'm going to give Andrea Gomez the last word because you won't be hearing from her again <laughs> until 2021 well from none of us because we're going to take two weeks break well, gracias a todos. Thank you so much for being with us this 2020, every Wednesday, whoever. You know, we have many people that is being tuned with us every Wednesday. Some other people are new every Wednesday. And I'm so happy to keep doing this, to keep you uh, informed in politics, in education, in health, in everything. And, and to have people like Bahira that is here with us sharing his amazing story. And hopefully 2021 is going to be much better not only for uh, our TLC life, but also for Texas, because our mission is to keep Texas red, conservative, and, you know, keep our values in this. And increasing our Latino voters. And increasing our Latino voters. You, Always. You, you already vote? I did. I uh, vote every year ever since I turned 18. Uh, that's only two years. <laughs> remember, remember, it goes on your public record. So yes, always vote, everyone. Always vote. It's very important. That's very important to vote. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. The last day of Hanukkah is going to be Friday. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, stay safe and healthy, as Orlando just said it. And we see you guys in 2021. I'm not sure when is going to be our first show, probably the first week of January or the second one. Absolutely. Um, the first week, yeah. The boss said the first week. So, yeah, we'll see you guys in... Just stay tuned and don't eat too much. Don't eat too much. Or Thank you. Because then you're going to complain that you gained so much weight. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you in 2021. Best of luck. Bye. Bye. And visit Christmas. our website, texaslatinoconservatives.com. See you in 2020. Bye-bye. Ciao. 2021. I mean 2021. <laughs> 2021. <laughs>